Welcome to 20 Minutes of Clarity. I'm your host, Jason Noble, and with me today is our co-host, Andy Merchant, advisors here at Prime Capital Investment Advisors. This is your go-to podcast for financial insights and advice. And at this point of our series, we have covered the foundations of wealth. We even went into the different investment vehicles that you could go into, talking about the three Ps. But now we're going to discuss the monitoring and maintaining of your overall wealth plan. This is such an important topic because of what goes on in our clients' lives is really going to be derived by the four Ds. You have the dynamics of the market. That's the first D. The dynamics of the economy. And yes, I understand you're watching right now and you're going, oh, dynamics of the economy. Thank you about that. No, we had to remind our clients about the dynamics of the economy after we had a 12 year low interest rate environment and a bull run that we haven't seen in over like 100 years, something like that. But what I'm getting at is we have those two dynamics. We have the dynamics of new laws and regulations that continually change. And then the most dynamic of all the four Ds, the most dynamic is our clients' lives. Your life is dynamic and the things that are going on. It's so important that you monitor and maintain your overall wealth plan. And Andy, when you're having these conversations with your clients, what are some of the things that you're going in and talking about? I think it's just so important. That, to this point, Jason, we've worked so hard with clients to develop the overall wealth strategy. We've really aligned their portfolio to everything you're mentioning to. But where a lot of plans that I've seen have always fallen apart is now the implementation and accountability. And part of the thing that, that I encourage everyone out there listening today to do is you got to have a, an accountability plan. Are you just meeting with your clients or, or with your advisor? <laughs> I went the backwards way. Are you meeting with your advisor only to do a performance review of how well all those Ds impacted your portfolio return? Or are you sitting down and monitoring the key priorities that were out identified within your plan to help you make better, more informed decisions so you remain proactive. So what I've done is really within the client meetings that that we engage in, what one can get experienced in the Clear Picture Wealth program is not only once we get the plan set up and we get good, solid onboarding and understanding technology, I think it's vitally important about four to five months into the plan to sit down and do a plan review, right? We really want to make sure that what we discuss when you are inter being introduced to our program and our relationship is now re-understood. So we're checking for understanding, making sure implementation and key tasks are being done. And so that's step one. And then the second one is, of course, we want to look at portfolio returns. But the reality is the portfolio is not really going to outline its true return, right, for some period of time. If we do it too quickly, you're going to probably hit one of those dynamics that, Jason, you mentioned that's going to impact your portfolio and have you maybe make it make an adjustment or feel worse about what you're doing. So it's really important to stick to the planning dynamics of everything more than just the performance dynamics of the things you can't control. So that's what we do is we really stay intentional to the plan and align accountability to what we set out in the Clear Picture Wealth program. Yeah, I want to share a story about this. We I was meeting with this couple and we identified that an, establishing a trust-based a state plan was an important step in the right direction. And I introduced them to a handful of attorneys here in the area that I vetted and I met with, and I see their quality of work with my other clients. And their assignment was to reach out to two of them, see who they liked, and then go in, have a meeting, and then start working on the process of building out the estate plan. And if it wasn't gonna be a trust-based plan based off of the things that, in my experience, right? Then to let me know why, because I'm always looking at seeing if there's something else I can learn. We met six weeks, six months later. And in that conversation, I assumed that they've already got it done. I assumed it because they were mm -hmm. like engaged in the meeting, like saying, yes, this is important to us. We have seen stuff happen with our parents and how that wasn't drawn out the right way. So we're having the meeting and even though I have the assumption, I'm always going to validate, verify yep. <laughs> what you expect. Right. Yep. So mm -hmm. I just said, Hey, so what attorney did you go with and what plan was established? They did not make any phone calls. They did not reach out to any of the attorneys at all. 
and they have they are still in a situation where if either if they pass away unexpectedly unfortunately uncle sam is going to get their hands on the money it's going to be tied up in probate it's just going to be an awful experience for their beneficiaries and those the people who are watching and listening right now they may go well, it's not my concern i'm dead others are watching and listening right now and are going well oh my gosh that be that's what we've done the same thing as this couple we had we were told that we needed to go down this path and we haven't taken that action maybe this is a wake-up call for those that are watching and listening right now to not delay this this is an important topic that's just one example it's near and dear to my heart because the six-month meeting was just uh, last week you know what we did, Andy? I want to share this yeah, with you yeah. and everyone that's watching as well. Is we called two of the attorneys right there in the office, and they have a meeting that's scheduled a couple of weeks out. So next time we talk about this, maybe I could give an update on what happened. But we just did it right then and there. I was like, I know what you're doing for the next 20 minutes talking with me. Yeah. Let's call these attorneys and start having these conversations. Yep. This is important. That's a dynamic. And new laws that come out with estate planning laws, that could also change um, any of these things on the estate plan. So you may have, and I see this all the time, Andy, like they have a will or they have a trust, but it was written when the kids were like nine years old. And I'm like, how old are the kids now? And they're like, they're 38. So, okay. So things have changed. Yeah. Right. We probably need to go back to the drawing board and see what that's like. Can you share with us a story? Maybe not around estate planning. Yeah. Maybe there was something else that came up that when you were doing your reviews on something that they agreed to do, you did your annual, you did your six month review and you saw that there were some dynamics that took place that they didn't address yet. Yeah, you're hitting a lot of the same points. And I'm sure there's a number of you out there listening today that are like, man, I did all this work and I've procrastinated. Um, I could go into my head of client conversations and the reality is just procrastination is what leads to not making decisions no matter how much work. And so that's where accountability has come in. When it comes down to it, one of the things that we always talk about is you're in tax strategy plan. A, a different strategy is you have to be proactive. You have to have an ongoing plan. It's got to, it's dynamic. I love how you started the, the, our conversation off today with being dynamic, but if you're out there and you're listening and you're like, I know April is coming up. I got to file my taxes. I don't know if I owe or if you're that person who gets your tax bill later on and you're surprised by it. It's because it wasn't product planning. And that's happened so much all because the ongoing monitor and maintenance of the plan wasn't provided. And I know there's so many out there listening, Jason, that are like, hey, but I go to my advisor. I'm expecting them to be proactive in calling me. But, but the true reality that I'm really just trying to scream at the top of the mountain as much as we can is advise, traditional advisory management is so focused on return and performance management, which is why I started with my story. And it leads to all of the other things that are way more important, you know, to your point, the estate planning, to the tax planning, to the proactive planning. Shouldn't our clients, shouldn't clients get a service for having their advisor be proactive around a dynamic plan for them and not reactive? to what you might think is important to you at the point in time. So that's my big story. It's a general one. It's not a direct one, but I've seen so many clients of mine who are always working with other advisors, waiting for a proactive response, particularly around taxes or education, checking progress, all these things and noodling on them. And they just sit there and procrastinate and procrastination kills wealth, in my opinion. Yeah. I also think there could be the fear of the unknown. Yeah. And in today's podcast, we're not going to solve why people procrastinate, but I feel like there is that fear that is involved going to tax planning. I've seen this with some of my business owners that what they are doing is at first, they just create an LLC and it's a pass through entity. And then as their income grows, as the business grows, there's that proactive conversation that needs to take place through then we start looking at doing an llc subchapter s what kind of benefit packages should we start creating within the company that will help the employees and attract empl new employees but then also um help out with taxes <laughs> from the business owner's perspective yep. do we set up a simple or a sap or a 401k all those different things do we do like a, a defined benefit plan 
that we could do for some of the higher earners. What about buy sell agreements and key person insurance? It sounds like there's just things progress as these business owners progress in their business, but they're doing what they're supposed to be doing was putting their head down and focusing on their business. And then they just do their taxes every year. And the accountants, there's some, I'm not going to say all, right? There's an accountant that's watching right now. Yeah, I don't do that. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about, you know, who I'm talking about, right? It's like, I'm bringing it up to the client going, Hey, I think we need to restructure this. And this will save you some taxes and put more money in your pocket that you could then reallocate into other goals that you have. And then that's just an example of monitoring and maintaining. Yep. Is, and those that are watching right now, they're like, can you go into more detail? Maybe. We got a compliance department that's kind of like, you got not one all size fits all. And I get that. But then I see that with business owners. But Andy, like you're really well experienced with working with a corporate executive who's getting like restricted stock units that's going to invest three years out. And th- that could be a big t- tax burden that comes into play. ISOs as well. These are things that are coming in that's going to really impact the tax impact of our clients. Is there things that you talk about with knowing what's going on today, but also forecasting what's happening later with these things that are coming due based on their contract? Are there things that you do today to be proactive going into that monitoring and maintaining of that wealth plan that we're discussing? Yeah, for, forecasting is important, right? Forecasting, you got to, right, Jason, we got to, our clients have to start taking, and I'm going to be a little direct here. They got There's got to be some accountability on their own. We can give all the direction and the guidance in the world, but if you don't implement and be accountable for your own steps, your own actions, then, you know, it's going to make it very difficult for the success of the plan we outline. And some of the things when you're talking about a specific scenario for maybe more of a higher earning professional, that has some unique benefits. Those benefits are future days. So I said forecasting is if you don't have a plan that forecasts that and you have other investments coming due or income decisions or tax deferral, how are you supposed to know when and if you could have, should have, or would have made a decision that would have reduced those tax burdens? So that's the intentional partnership. You know, what I want to align it to, and if you're listening, guys out there and ladies and the whole group that that is following us today, look at the efficiencies of what a family office does. And a family office has all the direction, guidance, and resources available. That's no different than what, Jason, we're trying to provide, right, to everybody. The direction, the guidance, the resources are here, but it always falls down to accountability. So that's the number one thing that I'm stressing out there is accountability to your plan is going to limit or lead to greater success than just relying on someone else to be accountable for your own benefit. I think it's such an important message that we have to start to, to change. Uh, the mindset of accountability and partnership. And I know that's where we have the Clear Picture Wealth Program. It's a design to be accountable. It has measurables in place. So that way we can both be aligned on the same page. We can identify where there's opportunities and things to prioritize. We can put out clear expectations and strategies for our clients to say, this is what we need to accomplish and this is what we need to accomplish by. And this is who's going to be responsible for accomplishing uh, those. And then we do, going back, the mid-year checkpoint, we're just saying, how are you doing on your homework? Here's how we're doing on our homework. And all in an effort to move efficiency and simplifying the client's uh, wealth planning. A little rambly, but I, I think it's so important right now on, on monitoring and maintaining is accountability and implementation with the far focus of let's avoid the would have, could have, and should have scenarios. Yeah, and I want to bring to light that in the Clear Picture Wealth Program, we categorize five major areas of everyone's financial life, and we then score them between one through 10. 10 means let's monitor and maintain. Those that live in the Charleston area, you got to paint your house every few years because of the salt in the wall in the air. We all know that you got to monitor and maintain it. If you don't know that, we'll get to work, okay? But what I was going on is you got to monitor and maintain. Now, let's say you score a five on something. Okay, you could go, okay, that's a bad score. No, what it means is we got to put attention and focus on whatever that is, what's causing that score to be a five, and look at what we can control, what we can influence, and make an informed decision on what to do next about it and to move that score. And I'm really excited like when we do those annual reviews and we have 
the 2023 clear pitcher scores, and then we have the 2024, right? And then we do the 2025. They could see year over year what where their scores have moved. And if anything has moved down, well, look at the dynamics of their life, dynamics of the market or the economy, right? We could point it to the four different dynamics. But it's having that conversation and that transparency. You don't have to have an economics degree to understand scores moving in the right direction is great, right? Score pulls back a little bit, not necessarily bad. It's just, do we need to make a course correction or adjustment? Yep. And that is another way that we do monitor and maintain wealth plans for our clients. And that's how we catch, key word there, catch anything that did change yep. that wasn't communicated to us throughout the course of the year. Because every client wants to have an accurate score. Everyone does. Yep. And every advisor that's in the Clear Picture Wealth Program wants the scores to be entirely accurate. If there is one data point that's off, it's great to see the engagement and like leaning forward into the meeting going, well, okay, we did get that trust done. However, we didn't send it to you yet. Awesome. Go ahead and send it to me and I'll mark this a yes. I'll move your score from a 7.5 to an 8.8. .8. Congratulations. You're above an eight. Wonderful work in the right direction. Then they were like, well, okay, then send me the new report once you get that uploaded to the new score. I want to have my scores updated. Absolutely. Once you send it, we'll update the score and send it out to you. Now, if you're not having these kind of conversations with your financial advisor and you're going, why not? This is where I want you to take some action. Go to clearpicturefinancial.com, check out other videos. You can go down to the bottom and you, you click on contact us, fill out your information. One of our specialists will reach out to schedule the next conversation. Andy, as we wrap up our conversation today, I want to take some time so that you could discuss any final thoughts on the importance of monitoring and maintaining your wealth plan. It's a simple it's a simple phrase, don't procrastinate. Jason, we've outlined how to do it. Sometimes our business, when it comes to your wealth, it's a hard business to relate to, especially with the importance because sometimes the results are so far down in the future, right? So remember, these things take time. Don't procrastinate. It's no different than going to the gym and hiring your personal trainer who sets you home and has a nutrition plan and everything else. It's going to take time to see the results. It's not about immediate gratification, but if you don't act and you procrastinate, you'll continue to be in your bad habits and you won't be able to, to make well-informed decisions. And then you get to a point, it might, it just might be, a we talk a lot, Jason, it gets hard that clients come to us and say, I'm ready to retire. I say, great, let's start the planning. When do you want to retire? They said, I did it yesterday. Don't be that person. Don't be that person. I wish I would have had a will, or I could have had a plan. Don't procrastinate. And we're excited. It's an opportunity to have the conversation. Andy, you said something that resonates with me. One of the things that I heard in a recent meeting was, man, I just wish I knew you 15 years earlier. Oh. And we hear that as advisors. Obviously, it feels good to hear it, but also it just goes to show that it's never too late to reach out, get help. So if you are retired, and just understand that we're going to have to make more drastic adjustments to your financial plan, generally speaking, more so than someone who reaches out to us where they're in their 40s or 50s and they have a 10, 15, 20 year time horizon before retirement. The things that we do now will help offset the risk for things coming down the road. Mm hmm. So that was Andy Merchant. I am Jason Noble. You just listened to 20 Minutes of Clarity. Thank you for your time and attention and have a great day.